about something that every time I say, I say to people, if you don't empty your vessel, you're not going to go anywhere with God. God is looking for empty vessels. Hallelujah. Amen. And before we even start there, what is an empty vessel? I'm going to explain today. What, and what God wants to do with you. And on Friday, those who were here on Friday, I said, um, when I was a baby, I was baptized as a Catholic. And I was a Catholic until maybe 28, 28 years old. No, even before that. I'm not going to tell you exactly when, because you want to know my age. <laughs> but I was, but just to tell you that I was a Catholic for a very long time. And uh, even though I was still Catholic, I started going to uh, Christian churches in 1992, around 1992, so you can see how long I've been in Christian churches. Even though I was in there, I wasn't, I, was, I started going in 1992, but I didn't know, I wasn't really delivered until 2010. It means that there are Christian churches that are dead. I was there. No one saw them. I need deliverance. No one saw it for how many years? Count. And my deliverance came after I almost died. And as I always tell people, I believe that I became conscious of something that I need to seek God. Seeking God is a personal commitment. And when you seek God, He changes your life. Everything I am today is not a church. That's what I want you to understand. It's not a pastor. Because the first time that the, the Spirit of God talked to me and I started speaking in tongues and He gave me a message, a prophetic message that was to happen two, three days after I was in my bedroom. I was in the church. I was in my bedroom. I didn't even know what was happening. So it means that I was actually already seeking God. But you cannot see God if you don't empty your vessel first. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Because the time that I started seeking God, it was a time where for two years, I was really not going to church anymore. And I was listening to all the preachings that I could find on the internet. But it took about six months when I stopped watching those things that I was looking on the internet. I stopped to take the Bible myself and pray. That's why sometimes, stop doing whatever you're doing. Stop it. While you're still doing it, God cannot act. Miracle comes when you can't anymore. What you're still doing, it, God cannot. That's the first thing to understand. Because God doesn't want anyone to be glorified except for him. So it means that what you're doing, you are looking for your self-glory. If you want God to be glorified, stop! Open your Bible, kneel down. That night that the Lord talked to me, as I was a teacher in a school that is in Oxbridge. It was around 11.30. I told my son, the, the, uh, this one, I told him, oh, I'm going to bed, I'm going to go and pray. You know, I had, I had my bad, my Catholic background. And my prayer was, our oh, Father in heaven, you know, may your kingdom come, and then I did my prayer and I sleep. But that night, something happened, it was different. I wanted to pray the same prayer. Something told me, because at that time, I wasn't aware really that the Spirit talks this way or not. Something told me, it was actually the Spirit of God, hey, stand up today, kneel down. I was in my bedroom alone, and then that night in my bed. And I started the prayer that I wanted to make like, 10 minutes, it lasted more than an hour. More than an hour, and that was the beginning of everything. And that night, I was praying. As I'm praying, the Lord tells me, pray for the health of your dad. The first thing that, okay, what's happening here? Then anyway, I obeyed. I started praying for my dad. That was on a Thursday night. Friday morning before I went to work, I called my mom. Is that sick? 
She said, no, it's fine. Everything's fine with him. I, I, I also got my brother, because my brother was already a born again Christian. I said, last night, something strange happened to me. I wanted to do my 10 minutes prayer. I, 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 I was now praying one hour, and then I started speaking in kind of different tongues that I heard people speaking in churches, and I couldn't know what I was talking about. And then all of a sudden, I hear this message. But anyway, I prayed because, well, you know, I did it. He said, and he was happy. He knew because he was already born again Christian. And then, I was on Friday, Sunday, my dad became sick. Hospital, they took him. He couldn't speak. He was really badly sick. Can you imagine? That's why I want you to tell you why I'm telling you this testimony. To tell you that God is ready to act in our lives. That night, if I have not obeyed, maybe my dad would have died on Sunday. That Sunday, my dad went to the hospital. When they called me, it's my now my, my uh, the wife of my brother that I called on Friday who said, Rachel called us on Friday saying, ask him if dad wasn't sick. Do you remember? That's how God put me first, his name. And then when my mom, I called my mom, I said, Don't worry. I believe he is healed because I think that's where my faith parents went and started growing. If you have not met the Lord yet in your personal Walk with him. He cannot use you. For him to use Paul, Apostle Paul, Saul had to die. Saul had to die for Apostle Paul to become Apostle Paul. If you have, but that, but before that, he became blind for three days. He became blind for three days, and there was an encounter with Christ. That's what I want to teach someone this morning. And for that to happen. You need to empty your vessel. You've been eating lots of food. You've been feeding yourself with lots of things. I will show you what God wants you to do. Want to do with you. This morning, my preaching is God is looking for empty vessels to fill. So now, before we even enter the Word of God, how desperate are you? How desperate are you for God this morning? How desperate are you to meet Him this morning? How desperate do you really feel like, Lord, if I don't have you, I have nothing else. Imagine that you are swimming in the swimming pool or in the sea, and you've been there for, eight, for some time, and you lack air. What is the first thing you've been, even they give you food there, would, would you like that food? What would you need? Air! That's how we need to be for God. That if I don't have air, the next minute I'm going to die. That's what, that's what God is looking for. When he, he is looking for, when he seek your, when he comes and look in your heart, do you are you desperate for him? Do you really want him? The problem is that people want God to do things in their lives, but he is ready. He is ready, but are you ready? You can't be ready if your vessel is still full. Let's enter the word. We're gonna read Second Kings four, verse one to six, please. It's on the projector, so that someone can read it. You can write it and read it in your homes if you want. Second Kings, chapter four, verse one to six. Can you read it, please, anyone? Thank you. Okay, I read it in the name of Jesus. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, "Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that you revered the Lord." But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Amen. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she cried, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, Go around and ask all your neighbours for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you today, when you go back home, to read this story maybe five times. After you hear this sermon, 
I want you to go home and listen to this story five times at least. Because then something is going to happen in your lives. Amen. But before that, I want us to read 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 before I enter the, the, the preaching this morning. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this also pressing power is from God and not from us. Amen. What does this mean? It means that no matter who you are, no matter where you are coming from, you are a vessel that God created and that he wants to fill. No, someone is only one person who understood this. That's what they say to me. No matter who you are, no matter where you are coming from, you are a jar, a vessel that God created. And now he wants to fill you. Amen. 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 And you know why he's not feeling you? He's not feeling you. And if God does not feel you, he cannot use you. If he cannot feel you, he cannot pour the blessings that he wants to pour in you. As simple as that. We are all the vessels of, of God. We are hardened vessels made on with earth, soil, jobs. The thing is that a jar can be broken. Many of us are broken vessels. Many of us are vessels that are empty. Many of us are vessels that are filled with lots of rubbish. That's the reason why we don't see the power of God in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. But today, you need to identify what vessel you are. And when you identify, you will know what to do so that God can start feeling you. And when he feels you, when he feels you, you're not going to tell someone what has filled you. Me, I don't tell anyone, anyone anything. When I go somewhere, in my old car, they call me gold. Hallelujah! Amen! I was the sister, I went, the car was, you can't imagine. I came like I'm going to take my old bag, like they say. And the guy, you know, he was just talking about my old car. Mm. You know? Like, you have a gold here. All the things that he was saying, I said, don't worry, I know what I have. Because I know who I am, and it's not going to be valuable for me. I said, that car, I know that in six years, it could cost me one million dollars. If someone doesn't know cars, I would think she has an old car. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Yes. So what you have, what you are, let the others say what they want. But God says something else about you. Amen. And if you know it today, then your life will change. And if you don't know it, your life cannot change. Hallelujah! Yes. Let people say what they want about you. Don't hear what they're saying. When they say something, say, God doesn't say it. He Amen. says he has something else for me. Amen. He said, I am precious for him. I am a vessel he wants to fill. Wait, it's because he hasn't filled me yet that you're talking like that. Wait, wait, I'm doing what I need to do Amen. so that he can fill me. And when he fills me, we're going to talk again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. No one is coming, going back the way they came. Amen. Because you're going to go empty vessel. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, God has created us, that's what we read in 2 Corinthians. And we are earthen jars that he wants to fill. That's the reason why he created us. But now, my problem is that today, many people are concerned with everything. You are concerned with your rent. You are concerned with the pressure you want to put in your car. You are concerned with your children. But God is like, be concerned with me filling you. Amen. Why are you concerned about filling your tank? You want to fill your car with petrol? You want to fill your house with food? That's what we are concerned with. Mm. That's what the Bible says. That you are going to prosper the way your soul prospers. So it means if your soul, which is inside of you, that God prosper first, God cannot make you prosper physically. Mm. Hallelujah! Amen. You want God's prosperity? Start being prosper inside. Stop crying about your everything, every day problems. He is looking after that one at a time. And when he does, look at this widow. This woman had a problem. She had a problem. Now, what I want you to understand this morning is that sometimes the problem that we have is not because we sinned. Many of them is because we sinned. Let's say it. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's because we are rebelling against God that many things happen to us. Because if you leave the path, that God has put him on you, uh, in front of you. you. There's very little chance that you will be, the will be going up, uh, left and right. But many things.
things come to us because of our own sins. But now, many other things also happen because it's like that. That situation. This widow didn't sin. She had a problem. She needed a miracle. She needed God to intervene. But what happened is that her husband, when he was alive, was a prophet of God, working for God, doing the work of God faithfully. He's even when even people were trying to, to bow to the, 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 the bow, he said, No, I have God. He remained faithful. He refused to do what everyone else was doing. Amen. Just to remain faithful to God and to serve God, he went and took things. Now the man died. The lady remained there. She has her two sons. And they said, yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's there. You have no money. So we take your two sons into slavery. She called the man of God. What do I do about this? These are not my dead. His dead. He died now and they want my sons. All of us have problems. We have debts. I'm not talking about physical debts. We have debts. Spiritual debts that are coming from our families. Things that are coming from our lineage. You didn't do it, but it's following you. We have things that you haven't done, it's just behind you. Then you are like this widow. You may look at this as if it was just physical, but there's more than spiritual teaching in it. This woman was in need of a miracle. Just like you today may be in need of a miracle. A miracle that will cleanse your whole family of something. A miracle that will change your life forever. Amen. That's what she needed. What is interesting is that she saw this man of God, she went to him. Man of God, what do I do about this? What I want you to understand, the first teaching today is that God never works with you with something you don't know what you're going to have. It is what you already have that he will use. If he has given you the head, it's your head he's going to use. If he has given you writing, it's your writing he's going to use. If he has given you speaking, it's your speaking he's going to use. But if you're still doing it your own, he's going to use you. Because God used what he had. What did the man say? What do you want me to do for you? Even Jesus, before doing miracles for people, he always asked, what do you want me to do for you? When God says, what do you want me to do for you, what do you do? A uh, lot of, uh, you know, mm, mm. last week we talked about preparing for success. If you don't prepare, if you don't prepare, when God asks you, what do you want me to do? You won't know what to tell him. Then you start putting a whole list. Then it's like, okay, yes, but still what? Because God wants you to be precise. I want this. Hallelujah. Does it matter that you know what you want? He does. But he still wants you to tell him, hey, I want this. Now when he comes, you're like, no, I want this. You know, this. You know people start telling stories like old people. You know, old people, they start from Genesis, they finish from Revelation. When God comes to you, be precise. If he comes now, say, Lord, I want this. Full stop. And I start looking at him. Okay. Amen? <laughs> That's what it is. Because if you start doing a list because we are not prepared, because then you don't know what is priority for you. Mm. So what does the first point? When you want the miracle of God, you need to know where your priority is. You need to know where your priority is. This woman wanted a miracle from God. And today we're going to see something. She was at the end of the rope. She was at the end of her own ability. She was at the end of her own resources. And I believe that some of us today, here, listening to this sermon are in that situation. Where you think, Lord, in this area, I have no more strength. I have no more power. I have no more ability. I have no more rope I can even stand on and touch. I have nothing but you. I think we all have at this one thing where we can stand for God now and say, Lord, here is the of my strength. If you have that, then you are like this woman. And then you're going to know what God tells you to do this morning. Amen? The first thing that God wants you to do, and number one is evaluate, assess your own situation and decide what is important, as I just said. She knew what was important for her. What was important for her is to pay the debt. It wasn't even the fact that her student could go into slavery. It was paying her debt. Of course, if you pay the debt, your children won't go into slavery. But now if it were you, you would have been crying to the man of God. Yes, the people want to take my, slave, my, my children to slavery. You know, my husband do this. That's what we do with God.
God. You start from Genesis to Revelation and the story. The man of God said, what do you want me to do for you? I have debts. Full stop. She didn't start telling him all those kind of things. She knew her situation. So make the thing that is important to you clear to present to God. Hallelujah. What bothers you when it is clear? Give it to God. Don't stop. He knows all the details. He doesn't want you to give him the details. He knows. But he still wants you to say. But then when you are precise and clear, then he knows, okay, this is the case we are dealing with. Because when you are like, my husband had debt, and then this happened, and then this happened, what looks like this is, okay, what exactly does she want? That she wanted to stop her children to be to go into slavery, or that she wants food, because God could have stopped that slavery thing, but would she have had enough money later to feed them? Do you understand? So if you're not precise, God can act, and you think he acted, but actually he acted in any of those things that were presented to him. But what was important in all that he was bothering on that specific problem? If you have debts, don't go like the Lord. I have debts, have me cancel them. Lord, I need money so that I won't be in debt anymore. And then my life will work in a way that is pleasant to you. Give me a job. Give me this. Give me that. Some people go like, oh, Okay, good. Should I clear that debt? The problem is that he will clear that debt, but you will take a better one later. Because you asked him to clear that debt you have. But did you ask him to clear pray, all the debt that I will come after? But if you have asked him something that was specific, he could have stopped the circle, so that the cycle, so that you don't go into debt again. Hallelujah! Yeah. So we need to learn to be precise with God. Know what is important. This woman. Needed a miracle and she evaluated and she knew where her problem could be stopped. And her prayer was that. So when Elisha said in verse 2, What do you have in your house? That's exactly where it is. When God wants to act in your life, when you have evaluated where your problem is, what do you have that you can use? Because the miracle of God is not going to come from like the manna. No, the manna was in the desert. The manna of God comes with what you have today. Hallelujah! Amen. He, the manna, He still provides. The manna still comes. But it would be based on what you already have. But if you yourself don't know what you have, oh. if you don't know what you have, how can He help you? That's what it is. The lady, what do you have? And she said, I have a little bit of oil at home. Hallelujah! Amen. Someone who said, I have two children. Okay, then, then he said the children to work. You know, be very careful. I have two children. What do you have? Only me and my two children. Uh, okay, that's fine then. I'll send the children to work. You see? Be very careful what you're telling God. Be careful. Because it is what you tell him that he uses. She could have said, I have two children. You know? It means, okay, you can use us to give us. Ha <laughs> ha. That's why I said on Friday to someone, if you're looking for marriage, don't say, look, I need a child, a chicken, a father for my children. Be careful. You want a husband or you want a father. Mm. And I'm like, <laughs> there's a yes, and he's going to send your Uncle Charlie to help you raise your children. It's true, because you said you want a, uh, you want what? a father. So actually, what you want is that what I want a husband. Instead of saying, look, I want a husband, you are, are you ashamed to ask? Are you ashamed? Ask properly. You say you want a child, the child, the father for your children. Wait, he's gonna send your big brother to have you very great. Give so a crap to the Lord. He's gonna send your big brother to help you raise those children. And then you be like, no, oh, no, what I meant. <laughs> Where were you? You were not precise. So let's wait for the next season. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't trick God, my friends. You know what you want in your heart. Ask him exactly what you want. The lady knew what she wanted. She said, I have a little bit of oil. What do you have? I have some oil. Then, what happened? This is exactly what the man of God was going to use. And it takes us to our second point. There are only three points I'm giving you. Here. The second point, and this one thing I want to tell each and every one of us. When I need, I am in need, my friends. You, you know, I'm very open to you. 
Because when I am in need of the miracle before God, you only know when the miracle happens. That's what the Bible tells us here. He said, what did the man of God say? Shut the door behind you. And I want to tell someone today, learn to keep your mouth shut. Hallelujah. When you want a miracle of God, stop talking. When you want a miracle of God, God doesn't do miracles like we see in church today. When God does a miracle, close the door. I'll give you the, the proof in, in the Bible. The miracle of God and not voyeurism. Today's church is promoting voyeurism. Where people come, they want to see someone who was sitting down, they're taking the day and start walking. Yeah! That's juju. That's magic. It's not the Lord. Because the Lord, my friends, even Christ, let's go in the, the Bible, just check what I'm saying. When Christ, Mark 5, verse 37, Jesus, they called him to go. A, a, a little girl has just died. Jairus girl, she died. Jesus said, Peter. Jesus was with the crowd and the other disciple, but he took only Peter, only the two of them. Only the two of them to go home to raise that girl. Why did he didn't call everyone? Let's go. Let me come and see how God raised that girl up that they are doing in church today. Come. I heard the man of God say, Open the mortuary for me. I will come on Saturday and you're going to see. Whoa. The thing is that uh, in the end, he himself didn't even go there. I will go and pray the rain and then we'll be ready. Okay, whoa. Then he didn't go because I think he would have had. Maybe he wasn't ready with his magic, that's why he didn't go. You know what I'm saying? God doesn't work like that because we don't give orders to the Holy Spirit. Mm. Hallelujah! Yeah. Mark 5, verse 37. When Jesus raised Jerusalem's daughter, he called only Peter. Only him and Peter went. Only Peter, only him and Peter went. They did not. They did not. He didn't take the, the crowd. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Mark 5, verse 37. Now, they say, when Peter, when you read the book of Acts 9, Acts 9 shows you that Peter raised talkers in the upper room. They were only the two of them. He didn't call the crowd, come and see. Hallelujah. So we need to be very careful. When the Bible tells us, shut the door, the Bible, the, the Lord said, when you pray, close your door, go in there. Be locked up in there. You and God the Lord. But today, we only want to make noise. Noise, distraction. Distraction. Distraction takes you nowhere. Noise takes you nowhere. If you want God to act in your life, you need to learn to remain silent. Hallelujah. Amen. And that was the lady, what the lady did. And then the prophet told her first, go shut the door behind you. Because I will tell you what, there are extraordinary things that God wants to do in your life. But he doesn't want spectators around. He doesn't want people around. Most of the time there are things that I come and just give you the testimony, but you don't know what I pray when I was alone. I didn't come and tell you first, you know, I have this problem. No, it was a problem for me. I just come and give you the testimony of it. But I didn't come first and tell you, you know, I have this problem. I have this, I have that. No. My problem comes. I lock myself in the room. I start seeking my Lord. But when he does it, I come and give the testimony. Hallelujah! Because it's not everything you have to No. It means you are still in the show. You are still looking for those miracles that I see on TV. A true Christian keeps silent before God. A true Christian who is looking for God's action in their lives shuts their door when they are talking to God. Because it's a me and you Lord. It's not because you have to, I don't have to come and tell you my problem first so that you will know it's a miracle. Because when I say, when I give my testimony, it's to God I'm saying this. So if I'm lying, it's to God I'm lying. Hallelujah. So I don't have to come and tell you first to come and prove before, after that he has done it. So remove that from your mind. Shut your door. What God was going to do for this lady, her neighbors didn't know. That's why, and that's the first thing. Expect the th third point here. Expect the miracle when you are coming close to God. Expect a miracle. God gives as much as you 
you have to store. Then she saw the, the prophet saw that she didn't have enough um, jars or vessels, and he said, "Go and get some more from your neighbors." She didn't go like, "Give me a vessel." You know, the man of God is there; he's gonna give me a miracle today. No, you just go like, "Please, do you have a vessel for me? An empty vessel, just one." Maybe they thought she was crazy. Maybe whatever. You know, they just gave her an empty vessel. She didn't ask anything. Just give me the vessel that you have, because when God is gonna make, do a miracle in your life. Is you are all the vessels available ready? Are they empty? If they are not, if she had only one, he would have filled. That's what we read here. That he said the Bible says what? That he filled, and then she said to her son, verse 6, when all the drugs were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then they all stop flowing. So if you are not ready and you don't have enough vessels, well, the miracle will also stop. But if you prepare yourself, if you prepare yourself, now this is where I want to explain something to you guys this morning. We all come to the Lord like this. I'll tell you this. This is believer A, B, and C. We know who is more prepared here. We all come to God with the same problem. Believer A comes full already. You know why it's full with hope with this color? You know what is in there? Sin, lies, fornication, adultery, thieves. Everything is here. Pride, self-ambition. Everything that the God, the Bible says, sin is represented in this liquid. Now, this person has not removed all this. And then he wants God to feel. Yes, he prays. Because God is so loving, he will still feel you. He feels. Can you see the difference? Can you see a difference? Exactly. That's why many people remain in the Lord. Their lives don't change. Is it God, God hasn't done anything? Is it that God did not do anything? He did. He did. But nothing is happening. Because they have never emptied their vessels. That's believer one. Believer two, feel me. God starts feeling. Well, short one. This one is so huge that God will continue. Because he is big. So depending on what you bring to God, he will feel you. That lady didn't bring one job. I actually plan to even bring more. So that to show you that this one will bring a big one and more. Because if you bring a big one, it's that you are prepared. I'm sure that that one has three or four more. And God will fill them to the top. Because the Bible said He was filling them up till He was still going. It's just because I had a small boat. He oh, was running over. So, what believer are you here today? Who are you? You're standing before God every day. Who are you? You haven't emptied yourself. Don't think God is not acting in your life. He has done more than you think. But you remain the same color. There are blessings, like Pastor said, that God gives to everyone, even unbelievers. That's the only thing you want to see. Small things happening and you think he's doing it. You can even stop deceiving yourself. Thinking God is using you, God is doing things in your life. Believer. I have worked with deceiving pastors. I have worked with deceiving pastors. We have the deceiving spirit. I'm talking about pastors. I have worked with them. With a deceiving spirit. I exposed it. You know, and they are still preaching today. Deceiving spirit. So who do you think you are? No one can fool God. If you have not emptied yourself with pride, sins, self-ambition, I myself and I, you are just this one. Don't think that you will move from here to here while all this is still in there. Never. Because God is a God of order. He doesn't do things to please us. He does things according to what he wrote in his mind. And he's not going to do a change just for you. I was, I gave the testimony of Friday him. You look for me two minutes, say a bad word on me. Even you are in London, you would see me in 30 minutes. If I had to take a cab, I would take a cab just to be there quick. 
But when God changed me, I don't know. Do you understand? Because one day, I believe that it happened one day when I truly repented. Someone came to me the other day saying, I, I want to repent. I said, you know, repentance is every day. Repentance should be once. You turn up and don't come back to it. So if you repent every day, it means you wasn't repentance. So don't make the mistake between repenting and confessing your sins. We confess our sins thinking we have repented. If you repent, you stop and never come to that sin again. So, repented and he became poor and he never killed a Christian again. Never, ever. So you're doing the same thing. You stop it and then you come back. Oh yes, I fell, I fell, I fell. No, those things I have repented about a long time. I have never come back. Never. So if I can't, you can too. I am a human being because you might tell me soul and God are in the Bible. I am a human being. Just like you and me sitting here. I eat the same food you eat. Oh, so we don't know what we were eating, so maybe that's why you could do that. Yes, but I drink the same drink that you drink because I'm in love. Hallelujah! So there's no excuse. If you are still here, don't think that God is, would make you move from here to here. For Him to start moving you, you have to be clear. You have to be pure, holy. Sometimes, you know, when even I wasn't a truly Christian, the Lord used me. I told you, I had my deliverance in 2010. I remember in 2003 when I went for the burial of my sister. I had a dream about a friend of mine who couldn't have a child. I was actually two months pregnant of Jules and I had a dream about her. She couldn't have a child and they were uh, planning to adopt. And then I had this dream about her telling me, oh, I am pregnant too. And then I sent her the email and at that time it was in July. She actually became pregnant end of August, but I had the dream a month before. It doesn't mean that God cannot use us, but still, as I told you, I was still possessed. The problem is that, is that you are clear, my friend. No? And indeed, my son was born 11th of March and her son 11th of May. Two months exactly, 11th of May, mine 11th of March, the same year. And this woman was trying to have a baby. She had had many miscarriages and everything. She's in America. By the way, she's the first person who offered me a Bible. You see how God is good? You see? And that's how it happened. But I was still possessed. And at that time, I even used to read cards to people. Just to tell you how ungodly I was. But God was still using me sometimes. So don't deceive yourself. We need to understand that the only way God can truly bless us is when we empty our vessels. If your vessel is still full, he cannot, he cannot start using you. He will use you just for a little thing, but if you stick on that, thinking it's enough, you will deceive yourself. Until, look, that message I gave, my friend was in 2003, but I was delivered in 2010, seven years difference, and I was still going to churches. I was in churches, deceived, a deceiving spirit that could use me, because at that time, that was 2003, 2005, I was in London reading cards to my friends, and they was, and I would read cards to them, and the Bible said, don't do that, and those things that were reading were true and coming to pass, deceived, deceiving spirit. Because if I wasn't truly a Christian, I wouldn't be doing that. Amen? Yes. But actually, Satan is being animated and knew that God wanted to use me for prophecy. So he was diverting it. But it was the discipline spirit in me. Hallelujah. We need to be very careful. Empty. And the greatest, the greatest sin I'll tell you the truth is pride. The greatest one. Because pride is what made Satan to be cast away from heaven. The greatest one and the most dangerous is pride. Because pride brings you to always want yourself glory. Always! And that's the reason why you don't remove that. God cannot use you. You will think he's using you, you are deceived. Hallelujah. This is how.
God will open it. When you want to do something in your life, He will stop with something small. That's why, my friend, if you see a church that starts, after one month, you see 1,000 people in that church. Don't put your feet there. If you see a church that is striving like this one, everything there is God. Because what, where God is has to be pushed. Where God is, takes time. He starts to be small to grow because the glory has to come to him. Amen. Because a church where all of a sudden, I will be, I will be, I will, I, even me, I will run away from this church. <laughs> I know. I will run away if all of a sudden we started. You have to go gradually because the Bible says God multiplies. It means what? You start one, you multiply one times two, two, two times two, two four, uh, four times two, eight. The devil adds very quickly, but adding quickly, be very careful. He adds and he subtracts, but God multiplies. Many times in the Bible you hear that he multiplies. He multiplied the all of his lady. He didn't add. He multiplied it. The little she had was multiplied in many jobs. And it's just because she couldn't even keep it that he had to stop his blessings. Amen? Amen. God multiplies, but for him to multiply, you need to be empty. Your vessel needs to be empty, physically and spiritually. Physically, if the lady had more vessels to put more oil, God would have continued pouring it, pouring it. But she had no more, so he couldn't. And it's the same for you. You want God to bring new things in your life? You need a new fridge. But you're like, no, but I like that fridge. I had it since, you know, it was offered to me when my son was born. So you know what? You have to sentiment feelings in that fridge. But you want a new one. Uh, and God is like, you want a new one, but you don't want to get rid of this one. Get rid of it first. Make an empty space. Then I will feel it. Hallelujah. Amen. You want a new something. Get rid of the first one. Because God is about order. He's not going to come and add where you can't have space. You know that thing that we like, no, I, I, I want this. Look at my children. I said to them, you know what? I want everything that doesn't fit you anymore. Remove. Why is the point keeping it? Why? If you keep it and it becomes an ad, what's the point? You remove everything, then we see now what you are missing. Hallelujah! Amen. If you don't remove, we're not gonna add because that's not how it works. Mm. And that's what I, they, they know me. I don't remove, I think you, you know what doesn't fit anymore. Remove. Get it out of your cupboard. Then when I came in the cupboard, I saw, okay, and then, you know, I went to get the same shirt three times in the same color. I don't know what happened. Three times the same color, you know, but then I put the shirt there because I saw, oh, shirts are missing here. Amen? That's the same thing God wants to do in your life. He wants to bless you, but where you want the blessings, you have, you have made space. But it's not going to work. So, I want us to read 2 Timothy. I'm, very, I'm almost finished. 2 Timothy 2, verse 20 to 21. It's on the projector as well. And now I want us to understand why God wants us to be empty vessels. When I illustrated with this, why does He want us to be empty vessels? That's what we're going to see on 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 2. 2021. Can you read it, please, if you have it? Next one, please. Thank you. Can you? Can, now. Okay, it's not on there. So, can someone read it, please? Amen. Chapter 2, 20 to 21. I read in the name of Jesus. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, yes. and some are made of wood and clay. True. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, mm -hmm. and the cheap ones are for everyday use. Yes. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a utensil God can use for His purpose. Mm -hmm. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the Master to use you for every good work. Amen! Amen. Full stop. I'm not going to comment much about this. In our houses, we have, even me, I have some color tree. I think it comes out only on occasions. You know, 
speak to locations one. You have those ones that you bought like, you know, as the water, you know, that's what you're using every day. But those ones that I have special occasion have this gold, they, this, there's gold something on, around. I was offered a long time ago. Well, I think when Jesus was born, it's gold and thing. To get them out, my friends, it is a special occasion. So are you going to be common use or special use? Mm. Common use. When God looks like, oh wow, I have no one around you can, that I can use right now. Let me just use them. But when you are special use, he even sends you. He even sends you. Someone there, he sends people to you. Hallelujah. Common use. He will use you just because you're there. You're just there. Just like in the top tree that you use every day. You use it because it's there. You find it in the kitchen, so you take it and use it. That's what God uses this one. Because as I said, it's not that the God is not pouring. He's pouring. It's just because it's not empty. It is there. God is there with you. God. His oil is too pure to purify what is not empty there. Hallelujah. So it's going to be just like that. It's going to be very, 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 very useful. You become useful only when you decide to become pure yourself. You become pure and God can use you effectively. And God can use you in a special way. And God can use you in a way that changes lives. Someone like this can never change someone's life. Because they are so deceived that they will think they are. But they are not. It's just God using you to try and bring someone near him. But you can't do anything that works in someone's life. Never. God will just use you to lead the step of someone. But he will not use you to transform. Because you yourself, you are not transformed. Do you understand that? So the vessel has to be emptied. He has to be emptied. So, God wants to use want us to be empty verses for honor. For his honor. That's why he wants us to be sanctified. Sanctified. You know, and the only way you can do that is when you really decide that I want to be useful to, for the master. I want to be useful for him. I want to do what pleases him first. Above my own things. What pleases God first above my own projects? What pleases God first above my own projects and ambitions? The Bible says, seek his kingdom first and everything as he will give to you, my friends. This scripture, since I heard it, that's what I'm doing. And I've seen God acting powerfully in my life. And I don't see it in the afternoon. I told you. Like everyone else, I used to be in debt. You know, like the kind that when, when a letter comes, in the post, your heart starts beating. I had that time. But when it stopped, I don't know. I know one thing. I just start putting God first. You know? And recently I told you about this sending me a letter that they wiped out the debt. You know? I used to be that kind. When it happens, when you see the letter, I'm like, no, I'm not a bill. You know, it's so good, my friends, to be like, I don't, you know, I don't have anxiety. And I'm not even working more than before. I don't have that anxiety anymore. Gone. And I don't have those bills anymore. Disappeared. But I've never been that prayer, Lord, remove those bills. Do this, do that. But I just remember that one day, one day, I remember praying that God help me. Help me. I just want to be in a way that is pleasing to my Lord. Amen? Amen? So empty your vessel, my friends. There's no other way. And the way to do it is to be cleansed. Clean, cleanse yourself by making everything ready for your miracle. The miracles of God are there. His oil, the oil of the Spirit of God, is He's waiting. But when He comes, He looks. Say, Wow, why do I come here? Because what I want you to understand today is that God doesn't use His 
about to be wasted. He cannot anoint you if you're not ready to work for him. He cannot anoint you if you don't want to. He cannot anoint you if you, you, you he knows that you are still not serious. Because he is a God of order. He doesn't do things just to please us. He anoints you when he sees your heart. It's not because you say, I am ready, that you are. God sees. You may be saying, I am ready, but he sees and says, no, I know you are not. You may think you are not, like me, when he called me to serve him. I thought I wasn't. I didn't even want. But for him, I was already. Hallelujah. Amen. So he knows when you are. It's not you telling him, I am. I refuse. I refuse. I even reject him. But my God was miserable. The beard was packing, and I was even crying all the time. But since then, I don't cry. I don't complain. And my life has changed. And I've seen it transformed. Today, you know what? I sleep like a baby. No matter what. Some people have problems. In their head. You know, when they sleep, pop, 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 the whole novel, 40 pages, written in, in, in one hour. No. When I put my head down, I read the Bible, when I sleep there, gone. I have no problem. My only problem today is, Lord, your church. Lord, this is missing in your church. Lord, this. That's why my problem is. Where is your problem? Empty your vessel first. Empty it first. Everything else, he will give it to you. He will pour his blessings. He will give you more than you think. He will give you more. Because if you empty one vessel, and then you bring the others that are empty around you, he has enough, more than enough. It's Amen. you who have not enough room to store it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have enough room to store it. The Bible says that he gives you according to the riches that he has in Christ. He gives you according to the riches that he, he, he you have in Christ. Sorry. You have more riches in Christ than you think. Christ is rich. Everything in the world belongs to him. But I want you to understand that not a drop of the oil of the Holy Spirit can be wasted or squandered. That's the reason why some people can be in churches for years and they, they are not affected by the Holy Spirit. Some people can be in churches for years and they don't see the power of God at work in their lives. Some people can be in churches for years and they don't see the transformation. Some people can be in the church for years and they don't see anything. And then because they don't see, they can even start fabricating things. They start fabricating. And when they see little things, they are, yeah, 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 yeah. No. God has so much more for us. Great things. Whenever I came here, my friends, I don't tell you the testimony of 300 pounds. No. Mine is thousands. Because my God is huge. Isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah? Because at least five, yeah, that's almost 700. It keeps going up, yeah? Because of. Hallelujah. My God is huge. He's great. He's not limited. That's the problem. We limit God. If you don't empty your vessels, imagine. He's not, you are limiting his action. He wants to pull. But then you don't have enough on that, that fridge that was from last year, from, I don't know, childhood, or from whatever. That's how it is. And then God can do nothing. Amen? Amen. So we need to empty our vessels. He is ready to pull something in our lives. Amen. He's, empty, he's ready to put something in your life this morning. But are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? If you're ready, you're going to stand up, you're going to pray. Amen. The Lord wants to put something in someone's life this morning. If you're ready, we're going to stand up and we're going to pray this morning. The first thing is that ask Him to forgive you. And to end, that you want to empty any bad vessels, any vessel that is not pure in you, you want to empty it today. You want to empty it. Sorry, I was going to put it right there, but there's too much. So you want this the vessel to be totally emptied this morning. If you are still like this one, and if you are like this, ask him, Lord, have other vessels open. 
Hallelujah. Because you can identify your son. I cannot. You know who you are. You know. And it's not me doing anything. It's the Spirit of God. Because I have no power. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of God. It's God who sent His Spirit into the world to convince us. Be sincere with the Lord this morning. Tell Him to help you empty your vessels. Put the Spirit of God that can show you what is wrong and what you're doing wrong or what you are thinking that is wrong that is still polluting on your life because this morning the oil that God is going to pour on you has to be clear as this one hallelujah Amen. it's not a matter of praying 10 hours it's a matter of your sincerity your heart your heart this morning set your heart clear with the Lord and see his action Hallelujah. But before we pray, I want us to sing, I surrender. Can you? Oh, you know what? I can't anymore.